Welcome to the Tech Humanist Show, a multimedia format program exploring how data and technology shape the human experience. I'm your host, Kate O'Neill. Hello, humans, and welcome to the Tech Humanist Show. In this introductory episode, I'll explain what a tech humanist is and what you can expect from future episodes. A tech humanist, as I've coined it, is a person who sees the exciting opportunities technology offers humanity while remaining cautious and conscious of the potential risks and harms those technologies bring. It isn't the same thing as a techno-utopian who believes technology will inevitably bring about a utopia in the future, or a techno-solutionist who believes technology is the solution to all of our problems. Instead, a tech humanist believes that when we design technology, we have to think of humanity first and foremost and remain active and diligent in making technology work better for all people. Here are a few clips from some of the experts I've spoken with for the Tech Humanist Show who sum it up well. I do actually identify as a tech humanist because I am optimistic about what technologies can do and offer and provide and the ways that they might be utilized to enhance human flourishing, especially in health spaces and including the mental health care space too. I just also think we need to be realistic about what technology can do and the ways that technologies are deployed, which might cause us harm. Well, I, I actually like the humanist puts besides the tech, since I advocate for empathy and social and emotional learning while we also train on um, the digital skills. I am a tech humanist. I'm proud to be a humanist. I believe that there is something distinctive about humans that we need to keep alive. One of the biggest achievements is that like uh, 240 you know, years ago, uh, when the Enlightenment set in, where he said, hey, people, dare to use your own mind. It was like a wake-up call because we didn't really make an effort to explore the world because we thought every, everything was determined by God. By stepping out of this dependency and using our own brains, we liberated ourselves. And so now, are we just you know, taking it too far? Have we used our brains so far that we're eventually creating machines that are smart smarter than us and they're kind of imposing their decisions again upon us and not just imposing their decisions upon us but also imposing decisions that are equally intransparent as God's decision if you look at certain algorithms. Right. We cannot delegate our responsibility to machines. We can use machines to improve our health and our, our well-being etc to improve the world but we cannot entirely delegate responsibility to machines. Right now, we're seeing massive shifts in the way humans live and interact with technology, which makes tech humanism more important than ever. To maintain our agency, we need to work together to fight bias in our algorithms, make sure we think of the user experience and how technology affects us, and consider the role humans play in a world that is becoming increasingly automated. I recognize and want a world in which people make decisions that I disagree with, but they are making those decisions fully informed, fully capable, whether it's being able to derive meaning from the systems we created or understanding what our meaning is or what our purpose is as a human being and not having that be shaped or guided by other forces. We really need to think about the effects of these things. Like, what are the potential harms of this thing before you put it out, right? When when Zoom came out and said, we had no idea that people would use it to spread racism and, you know, misogyny. They could have done that work, right? Right. One of the things I've seen that does give me a little bit of hope is there are more and more people not only saying that we have to do that work, but being in, inside these companies and holding them accountable for yes. doing it. For me, the reality is, is I think everything that has the capacity to help us can also simultaneously hurt us in some new and different ways. I don't necessarily think about what's going to help humanity. I think about what challenges are going to emerge with this technology and how can we navigate that? The first season of this podcast featured a number of interviews with some of today's top thinkers, experts, and educators in the field of technology with one guest interview per episode. From season two onward, Every episode will instead focus on a key area of the intersection of technology and humanity and the ways technology is changing and shaping the human experience. Each episode will feature multiple guests, featuring clips pulled from season one, as well as brand new interviews that haven't been and won't be released on the podcast. Together, we'll be tackling big ideas about how to make the future a brighter place for everyone. The guests you heard in this episode were, respectively, Emma Bedore Highland, Oluwakemi Olivernola, Dorotea Bauer, Ramon Chowdhury, Chris Gilliard, and Rahaf Harfouche. 
You can hear more from them and all my guests in past and future episodes of the podcast or find full interviews at thetechhumanist.com. Thank you for listening to The Tech Humanist Show. This episode was produced and edited by Chloe Skye with research by Ashley Robinson and Aaron Daughtry and Interobang and with input from Jupiter F. Stone and Elizabeth Marshall. You can find more information about the show's guests and links to their projects at thetechhumanist.com where you can also find more episodes or you can subscribe at iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. Special thanks to all of our guests for lending their voices and ideas to help make the future a brighter place. I'm Kate O'Neill, and you've been listening to The Tech Humanist Show from KO Insights.